In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the sinusoidal functions from their equations. And remember, when talking about sinusoidal function, we could either have the sine or the cosine, since sine and cosine are really just shifted versions of each other. And we can see this if we add or subtract pi over 2, depending which function we're looking at on the inside. So if we, on the cosine, subtract pi over 2 from our independent variable, then notice it shifted it so that it fits perfectly on top of the function sine of x. And likewise, we could do the same thing for the sine of x. If we add pi over 2 to this, it will shift it so that it becomes the cosine function. And what I want to look at in this video is the general equation for a sinusoidal function. And we can use sine or cosine, but let's use the sine. And what we'll do is we will take some constants and multiply them or add them at key positions. We will look at a times by the sine of bx plus c, and then we will add d on the outside. And Desmos allows us to use the sliders. So if I add these in, then we can just change the values individually. Now, to get back to our original parent function, we set a to be 1. That's the amplitude. Remember, the number we are multiplying by causes vertical stretching. And this number we call the amplitude. The bigger the value of a, we can see the higher the amplitude. But in our parent function, a is equal to 1. And b, that deals with period or it deals with horizontal stretching or shrinking or compression. And for our parent function, b is 1, but we can see that if we change b, we essentially squish or stretch out the function. But let's look at our parent function when b is 1, and then c deals with horizontal stretching or shifting. We can see c just moves it left to right. For the parent function, c is 0. And lastly, d the number we're adding on the outside deals with vertical stretching and or excuse me vertical shifting so when we add or subtract different values of d it just moves the entire function up or down and for our parent function d is zero so these are the values in our general equation that will give us back our parent function but we can look at them each individually again if we look at a first that deals with the amplitude Values bigger than 1, stretch it vertically to have higher and higher amplitudes. So higher peaks and lower valley, valleys here. But notice that if we make a fraction, it just squishes it. If we make it negative, it reflects it. So at negative 1, notice that the amplitude of this new reflected function is the same as the amplitude of our parent function. This is why when dealing with the amplitude, we just care about the absolute value of this coefficient here. Since if it's a negative number and it's smaller than negative 1, it will have an amplitude greater than 1. We can see that here. So let me put this back to the parent function value at 1. Now we can look at b. This again deals with our period, a horizontal stretch or shrink. And we can see when we make b2, it goes through the period. The purple one is the parent function. It goes through the period in half the distance. Or in other words, its period is pi, whereas the period of the parent function goes all the way to 2 pi. And if we make b bigger and bigger, it just squishes the function in more and more. Essentially, if, let's say, b is 5, then the period is 1 fifth the period of the original function. So whatever b is, we are dividing the period of the parent function by that b value to get the period of the new function. So if b is a fraction, we can see it actually stretches it out, makes it much wider, much longer period. But if b is negative, it will cause a reflection about this y-axis here. So we can see when b is negative 1, it actually has the exact same period as our parent function, but we now have a reflection. But that reflection doesn't actually affect the period. So notice when b is negative 2, 
the period of this function still goes from 0 to pi, just like when b was positive 2, which is why the formula for the period is 2 pi over the absolute value of b. If we take b back to its parent function value of 1, we can now look at horizontally shifting this function and increasing c to higher and higher values actually moves the function to the left and using negative values of c will actually move the function to the right though i do want to mention that this horizontal shifting is affected by the period is affected by the b values so we need to be a little bit careful when talking about this horizontal shifting or in other words when talking about what's known as the phase shift and that phase shift has to do with both b and c now d deals with just vertical shifting so it will move the function up or down relative to the parent function 